What is organic chemistry without reactions? We're going to talk about organic reactions, and those are ones that involve organic compounds. Well, types of reactions. Let's go over these. First of all, there are combustion reactions. We love combustion reactions. Those, you know what they are. It's when you take a hydrocarbon, something contain, containing hydrogen, carbon, and also possibly oxygen could be one of those, and it combines with oxygen, and it produces carbon dioxide and water. The next is addition reaction. We'll spend a lot of time with these. And then substitution reaction. And we will not spend a lot of time on these because we've had them before, but acid-base reactions can be organic reactions. And finally, esterification, and we'll, we'll look at that a little bit more in depth as well. So let's start with addition reactions. In addition reactions, you do just that. You add two things together and produce one. So you might think of this as a type of synthesis reaction. So in this, you notice we have an ethene combining with chlorine. So if you see the ethene, we recognize that because it has a double bond. So we see here the double bond is an ethene. What happens when we add chlorine to that, we actually lose the double bond. First, we have the formula for ethene here, CH2, CH2. Then we combine that with chlorine, and basically the chlorines combine here with the carbons where the double bonds are. And at that point, the double bond is no longer necessary. So that's an addition reaction. At the end of the reaction, Basically, everything is together. So we end up with CH2, Cl, CH2, Cl. So right here, we have the X and the Y. That's where the halogen combines, the chlorine or the fluorine, bromine, or whatever substance. So that would be an example of an addition reaction. Now, we call it an electrophilic addition because chlorine, when it combines, has electrons on all sides. An addition reaction. So there we have the ethene, the chlorine, and then we have the compound at the end which is a dichloroethane. So next we have substitution reactions, and substitution reactions are just that. In substitution reactions, you start with two things, you finish with two, two things, but one substance is substituted for another, and often it would be something such as a halogen. So it's a reaction which an atom, a group of atoms, and a molecule is replaced, or substituted by a different group of atoms, and that's substitution. So if, if you look at the first example, we have methane and chlorine. So the chlorine, one of the chlorines actually goes in and takes a place of one of the hydrogens. So at the end we have CH3Cl, and then HCl is the other product. So hydrogen is replaced by chlorine. You could also have something replaced by another group. By example, we have an OH replacing a iodine in this in this reaction. You have iodine and the OH replacing each other. So we end up with a with the compound at the end with a CH3, CH2OH, and then potassium iodide. And then also you could have things replaced on a benzene ring. And here we have NO2. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because it has a uh, nitric acid. But most of the substitutions we're going to do in the benzene ring are when we replace a hydrogen with a chlorine. So that'll be a little bit more simplistic. This is more the common type you'll see. For example, it's a halogenation. It's a type of substitution. So, for example, if we add, this would be, for example, if we have a Cl2 here, or you could have HCl. So, if you have HCl here. And then what happens with a catalyst, for example, that would be a chlorine that would be attached to that. And then what on the other side, you would have, instead of HX, you would have HCl. So you just have a chlorine on the other side where that X is. That's an example of a halogenation reaction or a substitution. Remember, benzene is C6H6. And here's another example. This is just a substitution reaction we mentioned earlier drawn out. This is a methane combined with a chlorine. So what happens? One of the hydrogens we see here is simply replaced by one of the chlorines. And at the end, we have chloromethane and then hydrogen chloride. And that would be hydrogen chloride as a gas. So the last type we want to spend a little bit of time with here is esterification. Now we talked about this more when we did functional groups, and we were naming the compounds in the functional groups, but this gives it a little bit more uh, practice on naming as well. And if you notice, this should be a, right over here, that should be T-I-O-N, sorry about that. Esterification, I-O-N right here. But let's get started. Esterification. Uh, this time we're going to take methyl butanoate and water are going to be our product. We're going to look and see what happens when methyl butanoate and water are. What do you start with? For this, the methyl comes from the alcohol. So the alcohol that we have to start with is here is methanol. It's one carbon and an OH, so we know that's methanol. 
and the butanoate comes from butyric acid. So you notice we have four carbons here across. So we have one, two, three, and then four carbons. So that's uh, this is butanoic acid. So what happens when these combine, you, re you lose a water molecule. This is why it's called a dehydration synthesis. And at the end, we end up with a methyl, and then this we name it with the four carbons, which are right here, butanoate and water. So the product of this reaction is methyl, the part from the alcohol, butanoate, the part from the, uh, the, part from the organic acid, which is butanoic acid. And let's look at this one. Let's see if you can name this ester. Notice there are two carbons on each side. So we name the part that's attached to the alcohol first, or from the alcohol, so that would be ethanol. And we know it's from ethanoic acid. You may remember ethanoic acid is the same thing as acetic acid, or vinegar. So this is what happens when those combine. How would you name this? Well, you name the part, this part first, so that would be ethyl. And then we have ethanoate. So let's go back and look at that one. So naming. Named after the alcohol and the carboxylic acid from which it came. And we say the ethyl first, and then we say ethanoid. Our naming and our few organic reactions we're going to look at. Please let me know if you have any questions. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love chemistry.